This has been the most shocked I've been with an Apple system in a long, long time. Hey guys, it's Max from Max Tech. Today, I'm answering the biggest question that a lot of you guys asked and that I'm curious about myself. Does the brand new 2019 iMac with the i9 processor, eight core, 16 threads, up to five gigahertz, does this thing overheat or thermal throttle? A lot of the previous iMacs thermal throttled and those are four core processors, not eight cores like this one. So Apple made a big jump, but the actual design hasn't changed at all. And we still have a one single fan inside of this machine. And the first thing I did is open TG Pro and I saw that the fan speed is actually the same 2700 RPM maximum as we had with the 2017 model. And I maxed it out and the fan sounds exactly the same. So it hasn't changed. Now that's weird because the 2015 version actually was a little bit faster. Let's start out with Geekbench 4. I'm gonna run the test here. And what I'm looking for is what's the maximum that the CPU is running at. So here we saw uh, 4.78, I believe, was the max. And what I really wanna see is how close to that five gigahertz can we get? Now, Intel has been playing a lot of tricks lately with the previous 2017, it was rated from 4.2 base up to 4.5. Not that big of a difference. And this one's going from 3.6 up to 5.0. And they're advertising max performance numbers if you're only using one core and if your computer is running really cool. And that's hard with an iMac. So far, I've seen a maximum of it looks like maybe 4.8. We haven't hit uh, five gigahertz yet, but we're close. And I'm happy because with the MacBook Pro that had the i9, that didn't even happen. That went up to, I think, 4.8 or 4.9 gigahertz. And what I personally wanna see and what I'm hoping for is that we don't have the same situation with the i9 iMacs as we did with the MacBook Pros, where I returned my i9 MacBook Pro because there was really no performance gain compared to even the base processor because of that huge amount of thermal throttling. So now I have Cinebench R15 open. This is gonna max out the CPU, it's gonna allow the fans to kick up, the system's gonna heat up, and we're gonna see what kind of performance we can get, and if it starts dipping down, uh, if you know the system gets too hot. Let's go ahead and run the CPU test here, and I'm gonna keep an eye on the max uh, 4.70. Wow, that's higher than I expected. So the maximum clock speed under full load is 4.7. That's pretty good. Sometimes that's quite lower than the max advertised speed. But now we're dipping down to 3.8. Okay, temperature's at 70. The fans aren't even moving yet. Usually Apple has a slow fan curve. And uh, we're heating up, but not that fast, surprisingly. Uh, the MacBook Pro was just shot straight up on the temperature gauge as soon as you started running the test. 1678, that's the first run there for the CPU. Um, that's uh, getting close to double what the previous one did. 3.88, 3.80. So uh, it's not running close to the maximum uh, speed that it could, but it is above the base clock. Now the 2015 iMac that had higher, faster fan, fan speeds, uh, that actually ran 200 megahertz under the base clock. The 2017 one ran right at the base clock. So far, I'm not hearing the fans at all. That's interesting. I wonder what would happen if I just manually enable the fans. If it's not gonna go be below 3.6, that means it's not really thermal throttling. It's still running above or at least the advertised base speed. This is really, really weird because this iMac is basically silent. I only heard the fans starting to kick up a little bit on the fifth run. And then after about 10, 15 seconds, it's uh, quieted down where I couldn't hear the fans at all. Whereas the 2017, after I think on the second run, it starts just to kick up all the way. So the i9 MacBook Pro does not thermal throttle, but we're also not reaching the maximum potential. It's not staying at 4.7 gigahertz and running all cores that way, which would mean it would probably heat up a lot more and the fans would kick up that much more. But I don't know why this is happening. If we look at the power usage, as soon as we hit run, it'll spike up to 120 watts. And then after a little bit, it'll dip down down to about uh, 80 or so, maybe 85. And then that will allow uh, the heat to stay down and that will force the frequencies to run about 3.8 gigahertz. Now this could be because maybe the power supply can't handle having that much wattage uh, for long terms, or maybe this is something that Apple decided to do. Maybe they decided, hey, let's allow the full force of the CPU at max clock speeds just to run for a short burst. Say you're opening up a new application, uh, you're doing an effect and final cut or something like that. But on the longer term, uh, let's uh, 
drop down the wattage of the CPU where the CPU is the most efficient. That way we have a lot less fan noise, we have a lot less heat, and uh, it's just gonna give a better experience overall while still giving us really great performance with the i9. At this point, I've ran this test about 15 times and I don't know of another Mac that's ran this quiet, including the iMac Pro, which is a very quiet device, but after this many runs, it, the fans would start to kind of kick up where running this test here, I'm looking at my uh, temperature gauge. We're at idle. 1196 RPM while this test is running. So here we go, I've ran this test a lot of times. I'm hearing the fans kick up. They're reaching 1939, 1969. It's about halfway where previous max after a couple of runs would be maxing out. I don't know if this is some new fan technology that they have or what's going on. I'm getting very consistent results as far as benchmarks. I'm getting fans that aren't even going up past halfway. I'm getting close to double the CPU score of our spec'd out 2017 iMac. I am very, very surprised. I think we're gonna leave it at that. Um, we have a lot more testing to do with the system. We're gonna run some different benchmarks, give you guys some numbers, do some video editing comparisons, uh, maybe some photo editing stuff as well. But this has been the most shocked I've been with an Apple system in a long, long time. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys wanna see some more videos on uh, this iMac compared to other ones, click that little circle above. We actually have a couple suggested videos as well. We have links to iMacs in the video description. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,